if you've been watching the journey on making my next picture book, then you might know we are on to the next step. Character studies! Hi there Space Cat friends, it's me Jules and in this extra series to my normal Friday uploads I have been filming the process of how I go about making a picture book. So far we've looked at the writing process, doing some colour studies, so next is nailing down some of the characters. I already have a reasonable idea about Tabitha the mermaid and Vincent is the character that was already the star of my first ever book, Vincent and the Vampires, so I'm not going to be changing him much, if at all. When I first made his character study, I looked at loads of different types of bats. I looked at photographs and I looked at how other people draw bats and I came up with a little character of my own. He has short wings, a turned up little nose, big round eyes with extra thin lines around them to make them stand out a bit more. And, of course, the teeth. It's really important to keep your character consistent. So from the front, the back, the side, it still looks like that character. You can still recognise them. I'm going to work on Tabitha again today, plus some updates of Vlad, the human vampire, and some of the sea creatures. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. It's... Nearly nine years since I worked on this book. It came out in 2012, so the autumn and winter of 2011 I was working on Vincent and the Vampires. So it's quite a while since I've actually looked at the, the artwork for this and the technique I used to actually make this. So um, it's really important if you're going back to do the second book in a series that you have a look at your characters and make sure that you get them uh, just right in the same way that you drew them the first time. So um, I'll just show you quickly one of my pictures that I did uh, for Vincent and actually this one didn't get used in the end um, but I'll tell you how I did him. So this is on watercolour paper, it's hot pressed paper so it's nice and smooth and I used some um, my the Staedtler pigment liners that I always use and I used a range of the thicknesses to make the different thickness of lines so you might be able to just see the round the edges is very thick so that's probably something like um, 0 0.7 and then the little dots underneath his eyes they were probably uh, 0.05, I should think, or a 0 0.1, something like that. And then I did the watercolour after. And the thing that I did last time that I'm definitely not going to do this time is for every single element that I did, so I did them all individually, I, I cut them out with a scalpel, and that took forever and also gave me an indentation in my finger just there that was very unpleasant. <laughs> so I won't be doing that again. So on to what we're going to do today. So here is, this is um, hot pressed smooth watercolour paper. And it's I'm down to my last two pieces because... Uh, We've been in lockdown again, and actually today's the first day that um, we are out of lockdown. So I might actually make it to the art shop at some point, which would be nice. So thinking about um, my main character, which is Tabitha, and we need to make sure that she it looks the same, whether you're looking at her from the front or the side. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to do a quick quick sketch of what she looks like from the front. So she hasn't got much of a chin, she's got quite big eyes and a little sweet little nose and then loads of hair and of course she's got her um, fishy, because she's a mermaid, her fishy tail and body. And I'm just keeping it really really loose at this point. Because this isn't a final piece of artwork, it's just, I'm just doing these character studies for myself to make sure that I've got a very good grip of 
what she's looking like. And I've kind of decided that I'm probably going to do her with blonde hair. But she's got this little crab fella up the top here who's keeping her hair in order. Uh, I don't, I haven't really got any characters who've got blonde hair, so I've decided that that's what she's going to, that's, that's sort of part of her, uh, part of her look. So what does she look like from the side? Well, let's draw her, so there's her nose, oh that's a, that's a terrible nose. This is all part of the process, you draw something and it either feels right or it feels wrong. That felt wrong, that's better. So she's got her hair up there in a big sort of knot. There's one arm. She could be holding a cup of tea or something. And she's, let's have her swimming. So the question is, do we draw our hair up again or shall we have it flowing? Because she's only going to be having her hair up like this when she's doing her cooking. So perhaps we ought to... Uh, I think we'll, we will do it up actually. So remember that her hair sweeps from uh, the, the parting is on her right side. So it kind of sweeps across this way like this. And then we've got these little dangly bits. And then that big bun at the back. And then perhaps all we can see of the crab are his eyes. Like that, and maybe a claw. Right, so that will go under her arm. And then of course she needs another arm. So let's have her other arm like this. You don't see the shoulder. Okay, so you can tell by seeing that her hair is uh, very similar from the front and the back and from the side you can see that she's the same character we've still got that little sort of button nose and uh, quite a sort of um, squashed circle that it's almost as if I've gone like that squish with her face and then what about the crab himself so I, I think of him, he's got these big claws out the front and then little legs at the back. And we're not really going to see him from many different angles because he's mostly just jammed on the top of her head to keep her hair in place. But what if she does have, if we have a back view of her hair and she's... Um, got her hair down it's going to be quite uh, wavy and lots of it and of course if she's in the sea it's going to be a bit sort of splayed out like that. Vincent himself is not going to change much if at all so I'm just going to leave him as he is but I just want to go back to our little chum over here the, the vampire and have a think about what he is going to look like. He's got a very um, he's got a very sort of pointy nose, hasn't he? 
So from the side, he's got much more of a, a tall egg-shaped face, like that. He's got these big bushy eyebrows and his eyes are a very distinctive shape, like a giant U. Like that. And then he's got quite a lot of hair in the old style of vampires from movies. And a bit of a sideburns. Characters do evolve over time. If you have a look at anything that's got a character that's been drawn and redrawn and redrawn, they do change. But we just don't want it to change so much that it's not recognisable anymore. And he went and the, the thing about some well certainly some human or humanoid is characters is what are they wearing so if you can keep similar clothes then that's really helpful as well and he has all those little dots under his eyes as well that shows us that he's been around a long time and he's a little tired okay So what I think I might do now is just put a little bit of colour to some of these and see where that takes us. I'm not going to bother too much with doing any light, uh, fine liner at the moment because um, I can do that when I'm doing the actual artwork. So I've just got uh, a pointed watercolour brush and my watercolours. I'm just going to lay down, give them a quick... This is something I've learnt recently, so you're always learning, is to give it a quick spray with one of these spray bottles. And then everything's wet! I've also got a bottle, a, a jar of water as well, just to give me some extra water for my brush. So what I was thinking was that we're going to have some pinks and purples. I'm going to actually wet some of this because I want her to look like she's shiny. So I don't want it everywhere, and also. If you've seen any of my other watercolour videos, you'll know that I like just letting the watercolour do its job. Um, I think what I'll probably end up doing is... is putting some um, scales on her when I come to do the actual artwork but this is just to give me, to remind me of what she's going to look like when you're seeing her from different angles so if she's looking kind of like that from the front what she can look like from the side so this is almost like a not quite a, a piece of clothing but almost like a piece of clothing so it goes hooks over her shoulder and I wanted to um, I didn't want it to be I didn't want to make her look too busty or you know Barbie like because this is for little girls and I think little girls shouldn't really be worrying too much about whether they've got the perfect figure for a woman because there's just too much of that around I think Little girls should just be, you know, think of themselves as beautiful for as long as possible and not be too influenced by, 
you know, Photoshop and that sort of thing. Airbrushing. Okay, so having left some of those white spaces, that makes her a bit shiny, which I quite like. Now what about her hair? So I said she was going to be blonde. I'm going to... I think I'm just going to give her a bit of water to start with. Um, and I'm probably going to use some ochre. In fact, not probably. I am going to use some ochre with a little bit of burnt umber in it just for the underneath bit because if you look at blonde hair it's not all yellow the bits that are underneath are often um, have that sort of darker hue to them and then I've got a very bright yellow it might be too bright I think let's have a look see what happens it's a bit acidy lemony yeah Okay, I'm going to mix that with a little bit of, I have actually got a lemon yellow, what's the one I've been, oh, so the one I've been, the one that was, I just used was gamboge, I think it's pronounced. So I'm going to mix it with a little bit of lemon yellow, which actually softens it just a little. And then a bit more. <clears throat> a bit more of that ochre. Back to the face on. So the face on one, what we're really looking for is those underneath areas, underneath the crab and kind of maybe that if you can think about it, it's like the under under undersides of the hair, if you like, which are going to be in shadow. So I'm going to use some of my ochre and umber for those areas. It's a bit too dark. And then some streaks through the bun, the messy bun. I love a messy bun. And then a bit of that lemon yellow, just to bring out some highlights. Now I don't know if you can see, but I am actually using, holding my brush quite far down the handle, which um, helps you to lose some control over what you're doing, which I know sounds a bit weird, a bit strange maybe for some people, but it just helps loosen things up a bit and I think that's what makes nice marks a lot of the time is having that looseness and then if we're thinking about her from completely from behind when her hair is all floppy and waving about in the ocean then we might just do something a bit like this. And whilst it's all still wet as well, it sort of merges nicely. So she's a girl who, you know, doesn't visit the old hairdresser very often. Uh, so it's very long and sort of a bit unkept unkempt, sorry, there's an M in there. So I'm quite happy for that to just be a little crazy like that. Uh, this, In terms of the the skin colour I'm probably going to do it fairly pale-ish. Um, well if we have a think about the crab, now we've got the hair colour sorted, I think he's going to need to be orange to contrast both the hair colour and the colour of her her um, scales. So I'm just going to make up some orange and just a sort of sweep of water. Sometimes I do use the colour that 
I've already got knocking around on my on my palette because it can yield some really nice results and again sometimes it's a bit of a surprise not always a good one but like I say this is just a bit of a test run so other things you need to look out for when you're when you're draw, when you're sorting your characters out and trying to see what they're going to look like on front and back is things like the width of the shoulders, um, height, what their clothes or their outfit is going to look like from behind, uh, uh, hair of course. Let's have a look at this chappy down here. Vlad. Now, Vlad has got quite brown skin, so I think I'm probably going to use a little bit of umber mixed with some Van Dyke brown that I've already got on my over on my palette. And to start with, I'm just going to put a bit of a wash over his skin and see what it's going to look like. Because I wanted him to look, he doesn't, I don't want him to look healthy and tanned. I want him to look a little bit kind of un, unearthly. Um, so quite the opposite of healthy and tanned. <laughs> and once that's started to dry, if you see on this one, he has round his eyes he's got some dark patches so as that dries I'm just going to get pick up some of that Van Dyke brown and just drop that in actually the Van Dyke is probably too dark let's try some of the red brown and because it's still wet you can go in and just work in that a little bit So the one thing I would say about when I'm coming to do the final pieces of artwork is um, I think what I'll need to do next time I draw him is leave more of a uh, gap between his nose and his mouth because I think that that sort of area, upper lip area, is a bit deeper. But that's why that's why you do this is to to learn those little mistakes. Okay, so he has very, very black hair. Let's make it black. Black, you need to have a, a red and a dark blue and possibly a little bit of green to make yourself a good ready black which is what I'm after there's an aeroplane going over you can hear that so I don't I live on the Isle of Wight we have uh, an airport over at Sandown so we get quite a lot of aeroplanes going over that are landing over there bringing people over or pleasure flights that sort of thing but well, I don't think we have many pleasure flights at the moment, apart from the fact it's winter. We've also, this is our first day out of lockdown, as I said, and, uh, you know, who's going to be taking a pleasure flight today? He also has very dark eyebrows, but I've got to leave that for the time being, because that will just merge in with his skin, because his skin is still wet. He has a a sort of rough... Uh, what do you call those things? Cravat. He has a cravat. So I'm just going to give the cravat a little bit, of, because it's white, it just got a little bit of shadow. And then his jacket. Now, the way I did his jacket was I, I wetted it and then with... Hmm, which colour was it? I think it was probably the French ultramarine I just dropped the colour on like that and waited it waited for it to 
move around and then drop some more water on if need be but that's what gave it the textured appearance in the first book it does have to be quite wet otherwise it just gets blotchy blotchy is not what we're going for that's just some water so when that dries that will should have this sort of appearance that kind of textured watercolory kind of appearance and this is so the, the point of this video was to show you how I would go about doing those character studies so that you can see them from different angles so I will continue doing that on my last sheet of paper and um, and then we're on to the next stage really so yeah keep your eyes peeled for number episode number five because that will be coming up pretty soon that'll be looking at layouts If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go. Make sure you subscribe and ding the bell, that way you will know when my next video comes out. And if you want some extra content like this, then make sure you check out my Patreon page. Link will be underneath in the description box. Next time I'll be looking at how to make my layouts, which is really exciting. It's where all the creativity starts to happen and unfold right before your very eyes. Until then, I will see you next time. Nanu nanu.